Over the last couple of years, AAC Clydespace has launched and failed its stock rocket on numerous occasions, badly enough to blow up in the face of the stock owners. Now it might just be near a launch to change the course from down to up. Although Bitcoin is the focus of the year, I still roam the charts for high return post projects in which to busy my money for whenever Bitcoin enters high risk zones. Recently we discussed the high potentials in phase holographic, now an old technical favorite of mine AAC Clydespace has yet again entered my field of vision. And I can't believe it's been 8 months since I last talked about them on this channel. Just like in that episode, this long formation is still technically preparing for a strong move in either direction. The only difference between now and back in January is that we now have more touches, or shall we rather say rejections. And the more technical rejections an underlying has, the stronger the eventual breakout tends to become. And if AAC were to break out to the upside, we're here to identify a safe entry as early as possible, but without the traditional drawbacks and high risk that they typically come with. For we just don't want to be on board a promising rocket that explodes second after takeoff. But before takeoffs, do note that nothing of what I say is financial advice. This episode is for entertainment and educational purposes only. And if you appreciate this episode and if it helps bring clarity to the development in this high flying potential, then please return the favor by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And share it with others who may benefit from hearing this too by shouting it loudly enough to be heard in space. Your lady, your lady, your lady. Let's now dig into Clyde Space quite straightforward yet tellingly technicals. AAC Clydespace is a company I continually have my eyes on. It's trading within a big descending triangle with gradually lower highs. Naturally, this is a bearish formation, yet to any sticklers out there, yes, this does indeed have the technical characteristics of a falling wedge, a bullish price development. However, due to its mere 2 degree angle, it is too negligible to treat it as such. Yet I guess that this somewhat neutralizes the bearishness of the descending triangle, but to what what degree, if at all, I don't know. Let's begin by zooming out a bit. The main thing that speaks in long term favor of Clyde Space is the monthly RSI. And as anyone knows who understands and uses these signals, they tend to vastly outperform any other indicators and technicals, and to the point where they identify absolute tops and bottoms, or at least much, much earlier than any regular TA ever would. Now, we don't have nearly enough of data to know what the correct lower bullish red line setting is, but if we assume it to be the default 40, then it gave us a signal amidst last year's corona bottom for an immediate plus 57% profit. Two and a half months ago, we were given another signal, one at the absolute bottom of 2 chrono 45. And the remarkable thing here is that the monthly RSI buy signal nicely aligned with the weekly chart that independently gave us another one. And if you want to learn more about the RSI and its incredibly powerful techniques, then I propose you watch the full RSI trilogy on this channel. On the flip side, however, if we return to the monthly chart, the EMA ribbons are gathered above like a big nasty thundercloud. These ribbons perfectly match the diagonal resistance line, which naturally provides us with a strong resistance on its own. This diagonal resistance, in combination with the ribbons, can best be likened to having a 6 inch oak wood front door, which in turn is covered by a separate 6 inch iron door. Breaking in won't be an easy task, that's for certain. To break through it, you'll need enough of willpower and stored up rocket fuel, two things I suspect the Clyde Space community may very well possess. Yet it equally means that any breakout faces a strong risk of turning into a fakeout. And given the high risks involved in an immediate triangle breakout, we'd not look to hop on board right away, but more on that in a bit. 
Normally, long-standing formations tend to result in strong moves from their own pent-up momentum. That does include descending triangles too. However, different formations come with different powers and any potentially bullish reaction from a descending triangle like this will never match that of an equally long sideways range or an accumulation. By that token, a northbound outbreak from this triangle should be expected to go places on its own momentum. Yet don't expect any miracles from the triangle alone. No, it is the monthly and weekly lower bullish red RSI lines that speak most loudly in favor for a strong possible bullish move to follow. But not only those, for another key aspect is the trading volumes. Now, initially upon seeing these gradually increasing trading volumes, they did confuse me, for the typical fear is for the volumes to decrease the further into a triangle it progresses, or any other formation too for that matter, and not increase like in this case. Although this here does raise some level of suspicion, I will simply assume it's due to good news, as the green candles are far superior in number and extent to those of the red ones. Had it been the other way around on the other hand, as in predominantly red candles, I wouldn't touch this stock if my life depended on it. However, based on these good biased volumes, it further increases the chances of a long-lasting northbound triangle outbreak. For do remember, we don't really need to know what's going on fundamentally, the charts tell it all. And the charts tell me that something good is cooking, at least it smells good. The way I'll approach this myself, now that I missed out on the lower bullish red RSI signal that would have granted me more than 30% in profits already, is for a convincing enough breakout from this formation. But what then do we mean by a convincing breakout? Well, frankly speaking, any breakout won't suffice. Now, breakouts come in all different shapes and forms. Some are strong, some are not. Simple as that. We just want to make sure we're on a good one, or else the risks of committing money go up significantly. First of all, it will need to be accompanied by convincing trading volumes. For the higher the volumes, the more likely it is to really take off. And those volumes don't necessarily need to peak at the very breakout candle. It can do so later into the rally as long as the breakout itself comes with meriting interest. Or simply put, strong volumes. What a high volume breakout means practically is that there are many people who are convinced of the stock and who will battle the bears. And to put this into a contemporary context, this might be compared to fighting a medieval war. Something we all have personal experience from. The opponents, the bears, are 10,000 men strong. Which of the following then would grant you the greatest chance of success? If you, the bulls, are 5,000 or if you are 50,000? Exactly, and similar principles apply to volumes. Naturally, this is a gross simplification of how volume works, but it should be enough to prove my point for now. Another reason why strong volumes are often required for a sustainable move is because bag holders tend to cut their losses short whilst early birds take profits upon any significant bull rally. And if there aren't enough buyers to push through that wall of profit and loss cutting sell orders, the price will once again retrace back into its dark hole from whence it came. But a breakout and good volumes are not enough. Each lower high amounts to strong technical resistance on their own. In this sense, I'd like for AAC to both take out the previous high at around 420, but even more so the resistance zone at 430 to 450, which not only makes up for the pivotal top before that, but also constitutes a horizontal resistance zone and the 200 moving average on the weekly. And trust me when I say that Clyde Space will need a bloodthirsty army of buy trigger happy soldiers to make it up there. An entry above this zone should equally and finally move the weekly RSI channel from a struggling bearish blue, one that has gone on for much too long now and that nicely represents the built up weakness in the price, back into a bullish red channel. In this sense, given that the trading volume requirements have all been met, I'd look to enter with a long at 
any weekly closing above 4 kroner 60. Note how I say closing here, for any week at or above won't suffice. Those face the risk of ending up looking like this August spike from last year, which ended up costing any assuming bulls up to 35% in losses within the same calendar week. And this is exactly why we won't hop on board a triangle outbreak right away, for it can turn on us at any given point and once it does it'll move fast and losses will pile up whilst the market remains in denial some of you might protest that this means missing out on 40 to 45 percent of value from the current price levels and yes you're absolutely correct but that's the trade-off we make to not risk getting stuck in a position that might just as well break out to the downside or one that may be stuck in sideways limber for another bunch of years for never forget that your risk doesn't only measure on the downside, it measures equally much in time. Being stuck in a sideways move for years is an utter waste of opportunities. That's money that could have been at better service somewhere else. And that's exactly why we're willing to sacrifice that 40-45% to premium. For if or once the price were to eventually stabilize above the 4 kroner 60 level, chances are remarkably higher it will rise steadily from there. In such case, our return per time unit is expected to be high and the risk low. For in the end, I guess that's what you Clydespace people want, to take your portfolio to space and beyond. But to do that, you must first ensure that the rocket can actually take you there. I'll take my first profits at the resistance at 5 kroner 60 as is the first level of technical significance. And this on its own is a mere safety measure to ensure the trade will guarantee me profits. And upon that target I will immediately increase my stop loss to break even. The following targets will be at 6.30, 7.30 and 8.70 respectively as I expect further technical resistance at these levels. And if the price were to break above 8 kroner 70 I don't see why it wouldn't take out a new all-time high. Do note that all of this is based on the weekly and monthly charts. This means that ultimately reaching those targets may take quite some time, if they go there at all that is. And the main threat to such moonshot in my opinion is the global indices. We've talked about it a lot on this channel already, for if they were to roll over and capitulate, then the stock price of AAC Clydespace will too be lost in space. Now the initial stop loss is a bit trickier, given that our entry is set fairly high we need to adjust our stop loss accordingly. The way I play it myself is to set the stop loss a few percent beneath this diagonal support line. And this I'll do for two reasons. First of all it would bring the price back below the 200 moving average on the weekly. But more importantly this line would lead the way for precisely that type of aggressive breakout move we'd been looking for. Any soon to be break below this diagonal line would tell me that AAC has already run out of steam. Naturally this all presumes we were to get a northbound outbreak rather soon and that the stop loss would be triggered roughly before the end of the year. What such break would tell me is that AAC might be in for some further stabilizing sideways movements, kind of like those of cell impact. And I'm just not that hyped up on waiting. In such case I'd rather scout about for a safe future re-entry but without the time wasting in between. This is a solid trade setup in my opinion. My only regret is that I didn't notice the monthly and weekly RSI signals as they would have let us in at fractions from the absolute bottom. That was all for now, thank you and goodbye.